Welcome to Agape Ministries Podcasts, a whole new way of thinking. Episode 6, Part 2 of Mary Burns' Teaching on Praise, God's Secret Weapon. circumstances means that we have faith that God's hand is there in everything that happens to us. It is to believe the scripture from Romans, all things work to the good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purposes. And in the last hundred years or more, when the power and the presence of God have been obscured by the oppression and the chaos of a collapsing world, the Lord wants to raise up an army of praise which will counteract all that negativity and stand against the false lure of riches and the greed that is there. The Lord wants to raise up an army of praise. Praise liberates and frees. Look at Acts 16 and Paul and Silas in the prison, down in the depths. They've been scourged, they've been beaten. And what are they doing? Are they whimpering? Are they saying, oh my God, I'm hurting, this is hurting me. They're praising God. And a series of miracles follow. The prison doors are broken open. The prisoners are set free. The jailer is converted and they share a meal together. Praise creates the atmosphere for miracles. It just comes to my mind now that if there is somebody in your life that you're really worried about, start praising God for them just the way they are. God has his own timing. You know, don't try to tell them when to do it. Just praise God for that person the way they are, and the Lord will do something wonderful. You may or may not be around to see it, but who cares as long as he does it, you know? Praise liberates and frees. There's an old saying as well, you know, don't magnify the problem, magnify the Lord. Don't wrestle with the problem nestle in the Lord. The Lord is way bigger than our petty problems, way, way bigger. And it's a wonderful thing. And it thrills his heart when we turn away from the problem and we praise him like that, you know. It's, he, it, he just loves it. He delights in it. He really does. Perspective, power, and direction come. When despite the negative circumstances, we praise God knowing and believing that his present power and mercy and love are working in this situation for us, we believe it. We let him do it whatever way he wants to do it, but we believe it absolutely. There's, I don't know if any of you have ever read Peter Herbeck's book, When the Spirit Comes in Power, which is a fabulous book. And he tells the story of Lusira prison in Uganda, where there were at the time I read it, over 300 prisoners, high category prisoners, were in for murder, rape, all kinds of things. And they have nothing. They're in what you would call like a concrete garage. They have no possessions. They don't even have beds. But somebody went in there and brought in a Bible and brought them the word of God and brought the Life in the Spirit seminars in there, and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. And he says that the praise in that place now is just heavenly. They are like a family in there. They are praising God. They never know when somebody's going to come and take them out and they will be executed, but they're just praising God. And apparently there's a heavenly atmosphere in there. And in his book, he says they are more free much more free than many of us who are out here. Praise liberates. Praise really does free. Surrender the person, the problem, or yourself to the Lord by praise. Just say, look, I can't do anything about this, and start praising God. Just really praise him for the situation that you find yourself in. And you know, when you stop fighting the evil... You know, when you really stop fighting the evil, then you get peace because the Lord is saying to you, you just praise me, the battle is mine, says the Lord. 
Praise is the link between thanksgiving and worship. You know, we start off by thanking God, and we're talking about ourselves, thanking him for things, which is lovely and which is good. But then we begin to move into looking at the Lord. It's like climbing the hill of the Lord. And Father Bob Pharisee says, praise claps its hands and looks at God. We're moving away from ourselves and into him. It's the link between thanksgiving and worship. And even though we decide to thank God and to praise him, I have a feeling that it is the Holy Spirit that draws us into worship. And it's in that place of worship that a silence may fall and the word of God may come down in that silence. Um, You know that little bit from wisdom, from the book of wisdom, when peaceful stillness encompassed everything and night was midway through its swift course. Your all-powerful word leapt from the throne on high into the heart of a land doomed to destruction. It's when we're in that place of stillness, of worship, of being lost in God, that the word can come. And I always think that praise is like the sparkling wine that helps us to receive and digest the bread of God's word. Praise overcomes the power of Satan. Praise is a cry of victory. And you know it says in Psalm 22, God lives in the praises of his people. Well, as we begin to praise God, we build up the presence and the power of God all around us, and the evil one has to slink out. Praise is the battlefield on which Satan is defeated. I remember Joe Dalton staying with me one time years ago, and he told me this story, that he was in Italy, I think it was, and they they were having a big praise and worship session in a church. And in the middle of the praise, three women started to shout out obscenities and to try and block what was going on. And Joe had a word from the Lord, and he said, just ignore them. Tell the music ministry to lead us on into worship. And they went on and on into worship. And one by one, those women just slunk out. Praise leads to unity. Praise opens up the way to the gifts of the Holy Spirit as well. And one thing, we should not get tired, like the book of Sirach says, in praising God. You know, you come to that point, I don't know, I do often anyway, you start praising God and you're finding it a bit difficult to find words. You may go into tongues, you get a bit tired, it's like a stitch in your side time. Keep going past that. There was a prophecy given once um, that the Lord uh, showed this lady, like, you know the way they have on a wall three birds going up like that in ascending order. And the word that was spoken was, these birds would fly and soar if they would flap their wings. And the interpretation that came was praise was the flapping of the wings. We would, if we were always in that attitude of praise before God, you know, we too would soar and we would fly as well, you know. So I think myself, I'm just watching the time, gosh, Tell me, shake your wristwatch at me if I'm going on too long. Um, I'm nearly there now. There's, I think, and I think this is really important, I think there is an order in praise. It, as I said before, it's like ascending the mountain of God. We start at the bottom with thanksgiving. And as we're moving up into praise and just looking at God, and just praising him for who he is, for the wonder of his being, you know. We're forgetting about ourselves. We're forgetting about the people all at the bottom of the hill. And then we're being drawn into worship, which is the rarefied air at the top of the hill. You know, there's an order. And sometimes when we're praising God, and you can be just moving from praise into worship, when somebody will 
ask for, thank you God for loving me and you're back down the hill again. There's an order in it. It's a movement into the Lord, you know. And just as in the Old Testament, um, the high priest could not enter the Holy of Holies without having first accomplished all his duties in the outer court and in the sanctuary. All the offerings had to be fully consumed and only then could he go in to the Holy of Holies. So we today enter his courts with thanksgiving in our hearts. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. And only as we allow that sacrifice of praise to be totally consumed, as we are consumed, body and soul ourselves, at the altar of sacrifice, as we allow the fire of God's love to burn away all the chaff that we have come burdened with, then may the Lord take us into worship. And in worship, the heart bows low before God. We are breathing a different air. We are in a different atmosphere. And it is in this atmosphere that, you know, a powerful word of prophecy may be spoken. The Lord may reveal his holiness. Um, People are baptized in the Holy Spirit without a hand being laid on them because it's We're in a different realm, really. And I don't think we've ever gone that far. I remember one morning years ago, we have a little intercessory group. Maybe I've told you this when I was in Birmingham before, I can't remember. But um, we have an intercessory group just from 7 to 8 on Friday mornings before people go to work. And people come to Mohol from all around. And this was a winter's morning. We're now in the church sitting in front of the tabernacle. But at that time, we were in the town hall and um, there were only about five or six of us there and we said a decade of the rosary just to kind of shake off the sleep and you know ask our ladies intercession and um, when we stood up to praise God after a few minutes suddenly I suddenly noticed that everybody was praising in exactly the same way and it was we were saying things like Lord you hold back the hand of the wicked one Lord, your right hand has never lost its ancient power. Lord, you foil the plans of the evildoers. This was going on and on and on. And it was easy. It was being carried on the breath of the Spirit. It went on for about three quarters of an hour. And then everybody just sat down together. And there was silence. And it was like something had been accomplished. It was almost like giving birth to something. It was just so peaceful, you know. And I remember saying to the others there, I think we're going to see or hear on the news how our praises were used. Not that we'd have been the only ones, of course. The Lord was just good good enough to involve us. And that night I turned on the television and I didn't see anything. But the next day at lunchtime, I was washing the dishes and I suddenly got that inner urge, turn on the radio now. And I turned it on, and the broadcaster was just saying straight out about the plan at Heathrow Airport where they had been going to bomb the planes, and it was foiled. They were caught in time. And if the phone rang, and my friend Finola, who's very prophetic, said, gosh, she said, I really got the urge to turn on the radio, and she had exactly the same thing as me. So our praises are used by God for many things that maybe we won't know until we get to heaven, really, you know. And our first ministry should always be to the Lord. You know, when we minister praise to the Lord, um, the, you know, it's like we minister the perfumed oil of our praises to the head. And the oil runs down right over the body of Christ. So we focus on him. And you know, in Ezekiel 44, there's a beautiful um, description of two types of Levites. The first type, worked in the sanctuary, they talked to the people, they took the offerings. The second group ministered directly to the Lord. And it is said of them, they shall wear white linen. They shall be, I will be their inheritance. They are my people. When we just forget about everything but the beauty and the wonder and the magnificence of God, where he takes us right into himself because he is so wonderful. So we are called, and obviously, 
when we've been praising or when we've been sitting before the Blessed Sacrament, when we come to the Eucharist, we are always sent out from there. We're always called to take a risk. We're sent out. And, you know, we are called to establish the presence of God in the midst of his people by praise. But out of that praise, everything will flow new creativity, new ways of running the life in the spirit seminars. You know, where we're to go, how we're to do it. It will be coming from the Holy Spirit and not from our own plans. And it will be something that has the mark of heaven upon it. So when we are with the Lord, whether it be in the silence of the Blessed Sacrament or praising God and coming into silence, we are sent out. It cannot be Jesus and me. As Father Richard Rohr used to say, uh, you know, the Eucharist is not an individual soul-saving technique. It's not just for us. We have to ask ourselves, how can we become Eucharist to feed the world? Where are we part of God's plan in this? So I think that out of this praise will come new ideas, new creativity, new ardor, methods and expression, as John Paul said in Novo Millennio Ineonte. Just, you know, we'll we'll be sent out with fire. I don't know about you. It's a long time since I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. It was the 19th of June, 1984. And... um, I was, you know, I love anything dramatic and I'd read all the books and I wanted to be praying in tongues, slain in the spirit. I wanted the works, you know. I didn't feel a single thing and I sulked badly for four days. And then I remembered the little word from Luke 11. How much more will my heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? And I knew I had asked. So I said, I'm going to believe that and I'm not going to believe how I feel. And you know, I think we need to be on fire. I think the Father has called you here this weekend. No father calls a family together if he hasn't got something to say to them. So he doesn't just want us to come here and say, oh yeah, this was a great conference, I really enjoyed it. We need to get home with our people, come together, see what the Holy Spirit is asking, dream the visions and dreams of the Holy Spirit, and really praise God so that that plan will flow from God and not from our human wisdom. And you know, I don't know how it is here in England or in Birmingham, but in many places I go around Ireland, you know, the praise has diminished. Sometimes it's quite jaded and tired. But my goodness... It is not a small God who has come among us, but the great God of heaven and of earth, the great creator that we heard about in that beautiful hymn this morning, this great God who commands the morning and shows the dawn its place. This is the God we are praising, the God at whose wisdom the hawk takes flight and the eagle soars in the sky. The God who with one grasping movement of his hand, deep into the abyss of nothingness, wrenched millions of solar systems from there, hurled galaxies into space. And also the gentle God whose mercies are new each day. The God who breathes the scent into a rose. The God who has been radiating light from heaven in one continuous flow of grace. How can we not praise him? How can we not praise him? So let's say amen to his call. And let's stretch out our hands in praise of the God who stretched out his arms on a cross for us. And let's make a decision today that not just at the prayer meeting or the community or when we come together here, but that at home, when things are going wrong, we are praising God because I know from my own experience, he lifts you out of yourself into him and he is much greater than all our problems. And I'll just finish with this title of a book that I once read by J.B. Phillips and it was, Your God is Too Small. We limit him, we cut him down. And he is this great God who set the stars in the sky and who became a babe while those same stars looked down on their creator. Praise the Lord.
Okay, Cathy, what spoke to you when you listened to that second teaching on praise? I found that there was a number of things that really spoke to me, but one in particular was, I liked the, the, the expression that praise claps his hands and looks at God. And then the idea of that prophecy that was given about the birds on the wall, how they were just sitting on the wall doing nothing, and the interpretation was that had they flapped their, their, their hands, their, their wings, they'd have flown away. And I think that's us. Sometimes we kind of sit nestling the problem and we don't praise God in the situation that we find ourselves. And when we take a moment to sit in, in before God's presence, praising him for the situation we find ourselves in, we find we're looking at him and know the problem. That was part two of Mary Burns' teaching on praise. We pray that you can take this wonderful teaching every day and use it to come against negative thoughts, fears, suspicions and worries and let God's gift of praise to you bring you freedom, peace and joy. Look forward to sharing some wonderful teaching with you in the next episode teaching that will help you keep your mind and your heart free from fear, a mind free to praise God, a mind free to see the goodness in everything that God has created, and to see the goodness in everyone that God has created. God bless you. Have a happy life.